All right, today we've got the all new EG4 6000 XP off grid inverter. Let's open it up. Oh, I think this is the little Wi Fi dongle. All right, so we got our user's manual, we've got our data cables. Looks like we got two different kinds of data cables. All right, guys, and there's the unit. It is quite large. I've kind of been avoiding these off-grid inverters for many years now, and that's pretty much because, well, I didn't quite like the idle consumption of them. It just seemed excessively high. You're burning so much power with the thing just literally doing nothing, and I, I couldn't get past that. So I, I just pretty much stayed away from them. But this one really, really piqued my interest. Okay, look here, we've got our load disconnect, we've got grid, and we've got a generator disconnect. Uh, and we also have got a battery breaker. Looks like 200 amp. We've got our display here. We've got the connection for our Wi-Fi dongle. EPS output, I'm not sure what that is, but we've got an off-on switch for it. And then on this side, it looks like we've got our PV disconnect. And then we've got a power switch. So let's open this panel up here and take a look at what's on the inside where we're going to wire things up. Alright guys, let's take a look on this inside here. This looks super clean. Okay, we've got uh, our battery communication section right here. Several different kind of dry contact options here. That's really awesome. Here's the area where we're going to tie in our battery so we've got our battery positive battery negative and then there's the uh, big breaker switch for that then here's our load grid and generator inputs with their disconnects and here's our PV input channel 1 and then our channel 2 so we've got our two MPPT channels right here 4,000 watts each we've got a neutral and then uh, I guess this is a ground yeah, so it's super clean and lots of room in here to work with. Very nice indeed. All right, so I got the unit mounted here so we can wire it up and do some tests. At the moment, all my 48 volt batteries are pretty much being used. So I'm gonna have to series a bunch of these mini batteries together, uh, but that'll work fine for testing purposes. Uh, so I've got, <laughs> I've got them charging up all over the place here. There's one charging over here too. And then I gotta charge these guys. And these are these are the same internal. So there's not gonna be any issue. And so while those batteries are charging up, I'm gonna do some cable crimping. If you guys don't have a hydraulic crimper like this, get you one. These are so awesome. And they're not that expensive. If you want it really, really cheap out, you could use this one. And it does work just fine too. And I just put the terminal in the jaws like this and just kind of cinch it up a little bit. And then you put your wire in. Start pumping. There we go. And that's going to be super solid. It's not coming off. Yeah, there's no way you're going to pull that off. All right, guys, so I got the DC wiring all hooked up. And I've got the batteries all ran in series down here. And also got a shunt so we can monitor the power going in and out of the batteries. And I did go ahead and pre-charge with these resistors for about 10 seconds. I wasn't quite sure if that was necessary on this unit. Some of these are coming with pre-charge resistors built in. Uh, also, some of the batteries do, but these batteries don't. Let's go ahead and flip this back on. And let's turn the unit on via the switch here. Okay. 
Okay, now I see the screen come on. Let's do this so we can see better. So clearly we have no PV coming in, obviously, because we don't have any we don't have any PV connected just yet. Interesting, I think we're showing zero volts from the battery. I wonder if this is set up to communicate with the battery by default, because we don't have battery communications at this moment. Uh, let's check our AC output and see if we're getting anything. I'm not seeing anything. That's which way is on. No, I don't see anything. I, need, I think I need to make sure it's not set up to communicate with a battery. All right, guys. So I finally got an AC output. And so basically what it was, the battery was set up for lithium. And when it does that, it expects to have communications with the battery. Uh, so it was getting a fault. It couldn't communicate with a battery. So therefore, it didn't want to enable the AC output. So what I had to do was actually set it to lead acid because <laughs> there's no, as far as I can tell, there's no general purpose lithium profile setting. It seems like they all expect uh, communications. This little EPS switch here has to be flipped on. And then it goes to UPS enable. And then now we've got the normal light on solid and we should have AC output. There we go, 240 volts AC. And if we run one to neutral, there we go, our 120. And then on the other leg, 120. All right, so now that we've got the AC output working, I wanna check the idle consumption. This is supposed to have a, a pretty low idle consumption. That's one thing that really kind of attracted me to it. So let's take a look at the shunt and see what we got. Uh, hmm. I saw almost 90 watts there. I think I heard that this was supposed to have under 50 watts, but this is definitely not under 50 watts. Let's check with this clamp meter here and make sure my shunt's just not wrong. 1.35 amps. My shunt is showing 1.5, 1.4 amps. So not too far off. Let's do the math there. All right, so we're showing 53.279 volts times 1.328. I calculated 70 watts using uh, my clamp meter here multiplied by the voltage. So we're showing 75, 71, 77. Yeah, so the shunt, this seems like the shunt and this thing is not far off. So we're still definitely well over 50 watts. All right, so I was digging through the manual and I was wondering if it had some kind of power save function, and it does. Uh, so it's option 20, power save function. It defaults to disabled, uh, so I went in and enabled it. Go to 20, and the number that you're at is actually right here in this little box. So if you're confused about that, there you go. All right, so we're on option 20. It's enabled. And then there's another section that is, I think it says bat eco, battery eco, or maybe. And it's enabled. So the power save functions are enabled. However, I'm not seeing any improvement. You know, we're still 88 watts, 76, 70. 88, yeah. Looks like we're kind of cycling between maybe 70 to 90 watts. I'd say probably, you know, clearly it's going to average about 80 watts. Okay, so I think I'm done with that. Let's move right along here. And I've done some work down here. 
I went ahead and added conduit fittings right here because you don't really want to have wires poking through these holes because the edges of these can be sharp. They could cut into your wires. I also added this 220 volt plug right here. So I got the two lines going to it and then a neutral. Now, this is just for testing guys. Don't hook it up this way. You really need to have a load center. So this to be wired to the load center with the appropriate gauge wire. You need to have breakers in between. But I've got this just set up for testing. Don't do it this way on your final install. And then I also hooked up some solar, some PV. So let's go ahead and turn the PV on. Before we do that, look outside, it's horrible. We don't have any good sun right now. And I ran these panels in series. So in series, these run about 160 volts or more. All right, so let's turn it on. Now, okay, now it's showing that we've got PV coming in to the inverter. I wanna look at this right here. So we should be, yeah. Now on the battery, we got a positive wattage going in. So we've got 58 going in, 60. Uh, there's the 80 some odd watts that is going to run the inverter. It's idle. And then the rest of it is going to the battery as we can see. So if I turn this off, we should go up here in, in power. Okay, that's kind of interesting. We did actually go up here. I feel like we should have gone up more, right? Yeah, it's, it's saying uh, 0.18 kilowatts here, so we should be getting, that's weird. So it's saying we're getting like 180 watts right now. Or 30, 137 volts on the PV. Same 0.17 kilowatts, so that should be 170 watts, right? Seems kind of odd, only half of that is going to the battery. Let's see, I'm gonna measure the PV coming in. Yeah, it looks like we've got about one amp of PV coming in. And the voltage is 140. Yeah, so that should be about 140 watts coming in. I guess there's just some overhead in the MPPT controller or something. All right, well, since we don't have any good sun here and we can't really do any good solar test at this moment, let's move on to running a load. And I wanna run a 240 volt load. So let me grab that. All right, so this is our old dryer. <laughs> I didn't throw it away because I was anticipating using it to test with. Let's plug it in. And yeah, I believe it's ready to go. There we go, started right up. Oh look, and we're pulling 5,830 watts. So we're actually doing more amps than the batteries can really handle. So those might turn off. And the fans on this thing are really humming now. I mean, we've almost maxed it out. We've almost pushed the 6,000 watts. I think my batteries are gonna shut off because they're only good for 100 amps. Yeah, let's go ahead and kill that. You hear the fans winding down. So I, I definitely like how these are, they're not just on or off, they ramp up and ramp down. So like if it doesn't have a huge load on it, these things aren't gonna be screaming all the time. Yeah, as far as batteries go on this thing, this is not enough. I think you need at least 200 amp hours minimum. Yeah, I wouldn't do anything less than 200 amp hours on this. All right, so that was a neat test. Uh, definitely can run a dryer but that would, pretty, that would pretty much max this thing out. So if you only had one of these things and you were drying clothes, don't try to run anything else. That would basically push it to its limit. It looks like you might have a few hundred watts left. 
to play with. So maybe you could run a TV or something like that. And it's, it's all going to depend on your dryer. This thing is, you know, pulling 5.8 kilowatts. You might have a dryer that pulls less. All right, guys. So I contacted Signature Solar and they got into the unit and updated the firmware. And now I think we do have that idle around 50 watts. Check it out. 50, 51, 55. I'm kind of seeing it bounce around, but that's the lowest I've seen it so far. Uh, at first, I didn't, I didn't think that the firmware update fixed it, but I went back into the settings and I re-enabled the power save function. And sure enough, man, it works. So awesome. Yeah, so this is definitely, I'm seeing it pretty much in the 50s. Ah, it bounced up a little bit right there. But this is awesome. That's exactly what I was hoping for. I'm not quite sure what those two power saving functions do. But I'm going to plug the dryer back in and see if it will still run. Okay, yeah, it still works. Okay, so we're idling up a little bit higher now. So I'm wondering if it's going to eventually go back down. Yeah, it does. Look at that. Oh, it's it's under 50 now. So they were right. I just saw it uh, idle under 50. <laughs> and the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth on this thing works great too. I, I did try that out, their app. So their EG4 monitor. Yeah, and so there's like the green mode enabled, eco mode enabled, so you can change those here as well. All right, guys, so definitely a very nice unit, especially now that the firmware is updated and it does idle how we expect it. So I think that's going to be the end of the video, guys. As always, leave your comments. Tell me what you think about this unit. I kind of think this, to me, this is the one. This, this basically hits all the spots, really. I mean, it's the split phase, 6,000 watts. You can stack them. Uh, it's got the dual MPPT trackers, a really good price. Leave your comments. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll catch you on the next one.